Yeah, do you think there's a possibility Sal will ever be stripped off the island, or is he like Staten Island Velcro? He's just in, he just can't. He yeah, loves Staten yeah, Island. Him and, him and Q. No way yeah. ever. They just stand. Yeah, Murray and Murray ended up to Jersey. He made it left. Yeah. Yeah. Well, his glasses made it yeah. out of yeah. Staten Island before anybody yeah. else. Yeah, <laughs> he got enough. a Soho it's glasses, yeah, Georgetown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Got yeah. yeah. he was he got his turtle shell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get it, we get it, buddy. Yeah, he was the guy who got. He was kind of working for the production company, right? And then he was like part of your group, and he was he was kind of the bridge that got you yeah. guys into True TV. Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, he was pitching uh, shows, and he had heard you know word on the street that people were looking for a prank show. Yeah, he's like, "What's our version of?" It? And it was like, "Well, we just mess with each other." Like, right. You know, we just... I heard like was the meeting like you guys just figured out what the show was going to be like in the room before? No, we were eating sandwiches in my apartment. Me and Murray lived together, yeah. so we were having sandwiches at the apartment. And then when we we did a we shot a sales tape which on our cell phones, and we showed it to them, and we. We showed it to the woman, uh, Marissa, who was working there. She lost it hysterical laughing. She said, well, wait right here. I went and got 12 employees. She said, I just have to make sure I'm not insane that I want to buy this right now. Right. And made everybody watch it. again. She watched it again. I was like, this is never good because it's not going to be as good. Still crushed and loved it. it and felt then good. They, she said, go ahead and uh, let's do it. And then it got a bidding war between them and MTV. But MTV wanted to recast this and make it a strip show, meaning five, one, day, one show a day. Five, because that's when they were doing a lot of their strip shows. Right, stuff. right. Five episodes. Oh, so they looked at you guys and they were like, we need somebody younger. Like, dude, kind of, so it was great. You guys yeah. just, you know, we need abs, not flabs. Let's go. Right. What are we going to do here? <laughs> um, you know, but so we were a little out of the demo. We were funny, though. They loved it, you know, yeah. and the thing. But they're like, oh, it'd be fun if they tried. But then they tried their own stab at it. Didn't, didn't work. Didn't work no. Yeah, because you're right. It really is. It is It is about the friendship. And yeah. the, that's what makes the show, like, you know, great. Yeah, it's like, fun. You it's like yeah. you guys. You guys, like, it's genuine. Ge you can't be genuine. Yeah. You can't be genuine. It's you hardest it to too? sell, but yeah. you can't beat it. No, you know what? F you know what too is you know how to make your friends funny, right? You know you know how to tee up your friends. You know the bump set spike is half that show, yeah. right? It's like what, what's he going to do great here? Let me do this. I'm not going to try to make you know somebody do something I think they're going to fail, in, or that something that Sal could do better than Murrow, or I could do better than somebody. You know you, you know you know people's wheelhouses. You stick to them, yeah, and you make them shine. I think that's a big part of it too. You want to see your friends be funny as opposed to. You know, like, you don't want to watch your friends flop on right. national television in high definition. Right. <laughs> it looks, you know what it looked like. But that speaks to you guys, though, because a lot of people would, uh, you know, uh, their egos would get the better of them. Yeah. They'd be like, I'm the most popular joker. But that didn't seem to happen with you guys. Really happened to us. You know, it's so funny because everybody we met, everybody had a different favorite. Everybody, like, we met, uh, one of my favorite stories, we do the meet and greets after the show, right, after the live show. A grandmother, a mother, and a daughter come back, three different generations. All three of them have different moments they like, all have three different favorites, all love the show and watch it together. Yeah. I was like, you don't, you don't get that, you know? Yeah, and no. I grew up on that. Like, I grew up watching TV with my father. I love that. Like, I love being that for people. Yeah. I think that's the co viewing thing. Yeah. I don't think anybody thought we were going to be that show. Like, we were on True TV at 10 p.m. after a, in between two tow truck shows. Right. That was our first season. Right. We're between South Beach Tow. And the Toe Monsters, whatever yeah. the hell it was called, right? The two, right? The two shows, and we're in the middle. We're a comedy, right? Between these two reality shows, they didn't even, and we took off, yeah. And they're like, oh, and they redefined the whole network to be a comedy network Absolutely. because of the success on that, yeah. And it would, yeah, I could see they cast you guys like, oh, uh, you guys are a reflection of the demo, male, this age, a little oh, older, but it's you guys got everybody. It's going to be that, blah, yeah. blah blah. And then all of a sudden, we start. Everybody I remember the first time we went of our, you know, we started the tour. We do our tour, and it's like an eight-year-old girl in the audience. She's like, I love you guys. We're like. This girl, like, what is she doing here? How do you know what our show is? I watch with my parents. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Was it a Was it a dream of yours? Was it something you you, you saw that you wanted? Because you, you were a guy who had so many Plan Bs going. I mean, you're selling you're selling baby stuff. I yeah. mean, you got your accounting degree. Was this like you obviously went all in when you when you were forced to, to when you had to? But went. was this like a dream, or did you kind of feel like you fell always into always it? on the side? Always loved it. Yeah. Always had a passion for it. Never right. thought it would pay the bills. Always was like wanted to be a businessman. Always loved love sales. I'm right. a salesman. I love sales. I love but you guys love making the sketches on the side. You just we were going to do it. that. I love doing it. And yeah. then I fell in love with editing. Yeah. I love to edit. I fell in love with filmmaking. You know, I loved, I did a couple short films. I love that. And I always wanted to be a director. I always loved movies. And then I was like, that was why I got into the business. I moved to LA in 03. Right. When we were doing the stand ups, I was like, guys, I'm taking a shot. And I went to LA from 03 to 05. Oh, wow. And I yeah. lived out there for two years and I worked at Nordstrom. And. <laughs> 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 and I sold pants to the stars. Dude, how fucking fun. Dude. Imagine you were a guy who recognized him from Nordstrom. Yeah. yeah. You're like, dude, are you guys told me where the shoe yeah. section was? Yeah. <laughs> now you're doing the O2 Crazy. arena? Flip of that. <laughs> Flip of that is I used to I used to sell pants. I sold pants to Vince Vaughn. 
And then we yeah. end up doing a Nashville Comedy Festival, which he helped uh, put together. And we're having lunch with him. I was like, you know, I don't want to brag, but I, I sold you a pair, <laughs> sold you a pair of jeans. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, you were at Nordstrom. I was like, I couldn't even breathe. I was like, I was so nervous because one of my idols was hysterical. I was like, but you know, you're welcome. I found your pair of jeans. I fit your fucking tall ass. I found out the 36 inch you needed. Yeah. Yeah. How did the had the movie uh, the movie happened right before COVID? That was we were a, the last. It was movie wild. That got released before COVID. So yeah. we had three weeks in the theaters, and then the world shut down. And it was so funny because like a year and a half later, you still had movie. And we make the joke that we're the longest running movie in history because it was still on marquees that said Impractical <laughs> Jokers movie a year and a half later because all the businesses closed. Yeah. Well, they were all closed, you know. So like, guys, we're still we're still we're still playing yeah. over at the Regal in yeah. uh, Cincinnati. You know. I mean, it was like right after, right? right like after. it was when was that premiere? That it would premiered not... February. Oh, it was like right there. Yeah, yeah it was like a February couple weeks year, after yeah. it, COVID happened. And yeah, it was just it was like, February 11th, 15th. That, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a crazy experience. That was really fun to do. And I really got to dive in. And Chris Henchy was our director. And he really made room for me to help dive in and make some decisions and help. And then with the edit and stuff, it was great. 